National Co Convener, Legal and Legislative Cell, BJP, former National Co Convener, Media Cell, BJP, and Advocate Supreme Court of India. Has been an active professional, an able leader, and a goal, a humble human being all through his life. He is always strive to uphold social, public, and moral values. He understands the importance of education and hence has always tried and emphasized to achieve higher degrees regardless of time and situations. Interaction with various eminent personalities nationally and internationally has given him a global experience of various social, political and economic aspects of development. He has travelled extensively in various parts of the country and few parts of the world and got a feel of diverse cultures and social structures along with basic values of life such as adjustment to different conditions and being accommodative to any situation in life. He is a person who strongly believes in hard work, determination, sincerity and integrity and that the key to success always lies in maintaining these qualities in achieving all tasks whether personal or national goals.
all the narrations that were cited by my previous speakers. And I must remind this audience on this minus table, round table, that they all were the outcome of those two 1894 Act. Not even a single example of the present dispensation was given because it is not yet in the action. That has not even come to force. Honestly, yes. At the same time, I must also give a free and heartfelt thanks and compliments to Manasheshi Jaradi for calling spade a spade. Yes, he not only said it is the act of which leads in 1984, but it is a draconian law, honestly. And I must also give a free thanks and sincere compliments to the DJ UK government in 2013 that they try to amend this and they try to improve this, they try to better this law and they try to make some new law put into force so that the land acquisition is made very viable, where the farmer is benefited, where the industries are, where the industries come, where the GDP goes, where the development takes place, where the infrastructure comes to close. It was a fair attempt, agreed. But probably I can make political speeches, I can also make a lot of comments which are relevant or relevant for this context, but I try, I try as better as possible to speak to the issue. That's the reason why I say, quote unquote, probably. Otherwise, I can give a sweeping statement like what my speaker said. Okay. Probably, there must be a positive time to do this. Because 2014 elections were fast approaching, and something has to be done to tell the farming community that group may take care of your concern whatever, whatever their political reasons. Or this, this, this bill has been in pending for the last years, several years, because this was with the standing committee for almost three years. So in 2013, a sincere effort was made, again a quote, as I said, quote unquote probably, again I said, quote unquote, sincere effort was made by the then UBA government to bring in new legislation. It came into force on 1st of two, first January of 2014. Then that government has lost its power and in 2014 May, a new dispensation, a new setup has come into existence. So, the point one is why there was a need to amend this or bring in a new legislation land acquisition because of the backlog of loads of loads of ministers that we are carrying. So probably the earlier previous government by first of might have also realized that it is not the Indian best part of it. From first to the first of January 2014, this law was executed, this law has come into force. Then political developments took place in the country. There was a change in the governance. Okay. Then the new government came out, the, the new government came, the new government thought that it should amend and better the law for, for more effective implementation. Here the point is, two things broadly come up during this discussion. One is, there must be a right balance between the parties. Two, has this been tested? The 2013 Act has been tested, has been put to test. So why this new government, the India government, the present government is hurriedly deciding to get it through without any testing? But I must tell you that the sufficient work has been done on this. And again, I must remind this audience, the honest audience, that all the suggestions that were incorporated in 2014 Act, which was passed by the Lok Sabha, or the subsequent development 2015 Amendment Bill that is in ordinance today. The suggestions made by predominantly, again, majorly, mainly by the Congress governments and Congress chief ministers and Congress party leaders. When you, when you walk through your path, you come to know what are the difficulties. And Indian politics, irrespective of political parties, 
more and more political parties. Indian polity is wise enough to realize the difficulties and it is also capable of removing those difficulties. That is the reason why the then Congress ministers, Congress chief ministers, Congress union ministers and Congress policy makers have suggested some amendments to this. And those amendments in principle work incorporated in the politics. Without knowing this, or deliberately suppressing these facts is a crime against the democracy. Without knowing, because we are all sitting here to suggest amendments or give our suggestions to a highly respectable joint parliamentary committee, which is more and more political affiliations. Joint parliamentary committee consists of the persons of all the political parties. So then, if when we make a convention, we make a wrong in presenting our, when we make a wrong in submitting our proposals, we should be thoroughly careful. So, the, all the amendments, that I'll come to, I'll explain to you in a second because I will not take much time because I know what uh, the time uh, demands. 1894 Act was <coughs> taken out, was not because four reasons basically. In that core Act, there was no consultancy part. When I take a land of a farmer or any landowner, I did not consult him, take his consent. There is no transparency, whether which land I want, for what, for how much money, that's in transparency. There is no, it's only a nominal compensation. And so there was no proper grievance redressal mechanism. For these reasons, India has suffered almost 120 years and the right from Tehri to Outer Ring Road, all the problems that we suffered is part of this, because of this. And I also, as I said here, it was suggested, the land acquisition is a process where the central or state governments for various infrastructure and economic growth initiatives. This has been objective derived from my predecessor, my years previous. Now, it's welcome, because I repeatedly say that I welcome 2013 Act because I was party to that. I supported the Land Acquisition Act 2013 unanimously and without the, without the support of Bharti and the party at that time, the bill would not have come into existence. So I, I honestly submit that I am a party to that decision. But I suggest also, as I also said, that when we walk through a park, we will come about the difficulties and when we realize the difficulties, we also try to remove it, eradicate them and further move ahead. What the biggest will happen? What was where was the need for amendment given this act? First of all, 2013 Act. According to me, it is nothing but a old water in a new water. Point is, again, you have enhanced, you have enhanced the compensation for two per two, two per two, 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 two four times of the market price. Again, but for what? Simultaneously, the previous government for obvious reasons, because I said I will not attribute any voting or political voters to anyone, which I am better at doing it, but I will do it in later part, when, because this is not a forum where I should do that. Thirteen major acts were taken out of this compensation methodology. These thirteen, these, these thirteen acts improve major share of the land acquisition, 80-90% of the land acquisition. If you want to acquire land for railways that have been exempted, so the new compensation of four times will not come into existence. If you want to acquire land for some irrigation project or coal mines or national highways, so the land that is basically required in India, the 13 categories, they were exempted from this. So the poor farmer who has given his land for a railway project or a metro project or or any irrigation project or national highway, will get the same compensation as he was getting in 1984. 1894. 1894, sorry, 1894. So he would not get the new compensation of four times to the market area because those, those 13 areas were excluded. Now, is it not my duty to put all the people pre data data in the world? Because several things have been spoken here that equal justice. If I do or try to implement equal justice, 
is a crime or I have committed any sin against the public community or Indian landholders. What I did in the new act, there was this barricade of the 13 ministries were taken up. So suppose if I am acquiring a land for a particular project, usually it is four, four times. And according to the previous UPA Act, 2013 Act, it is only for the eight and for nominal compensation. Now I said nothing doing. Every one who gives an inch of land should get four times of land value. Fine. Two. Much has been talked about consent because I'm, I'm very sure. I mean, I'm ready to because don't go to delay for this. Otherwise, I have come to do it here. What the over the list. Consent. It should not be done away. It is anti-democratic. If it is anti-democratic, then all the Congress chief ministers are anti-democratic. The demand has mainly come from all the chief ministers of Congress. I showed the letters that which Maharashtra chief minister has written to Nehra Pramesh that this law is not at all implementable. It will create a hurdle. The growth will come to a standstill. These are not my words, my name is not Balsu Pramani or Narendra Modi. That said, the consent activity should be done away. It is the Congress chief ministers. If it is, this is anti-democratic, all the Congress chief ministers are anti-democratic. They are against people. They are ruthless. Many states, including Congress, would have clearly stated that land acquisition of the land act is next to impossible and wanted changes it. When in different status to, in various status to, be the Prime Minister Mr. Manmohan Singh, or be the Rural Development Minister Dhiram Ramesh, or at a meeting convened by Leader Rural Development Minister Nitin Gadkari on 27-6-2014. 27-6-2014. Immediately after we took over, after the present dispensation concept, after immediately after the present dispensation took over, 27, 27 June 2014, there were the Revenue Minister's conference, Revenue Secretaries were there. At the beginning of the moment, it's an official meeting conducted by the Rural Development Ministry, the Union Rural Development Ministry. I am reading the minutes of it. It may not be proper for me to read some of the points that are the points of the official document, but it is, I have not had any other option except reading it to read it in public. All the states raise their voice to amend, improve, modify, and let the new codes in 2039. I must tell my predecessors that I am not diluting the previous act. I am only trying to improve it. I am not giving the spirit of the previous development act because that is a very important act. I am party to that. I voted for it. And the BJP unanimously voted in 2013. So what we are trying to do is when we walk in the past and there are difficulties, when we come to know some, there are some loopholes and gray areas, I am trying to remove them. If I should like this, this should not be tried over. Different parties have said that they know the I can leave out all those things, but I will skip this. Some Congress chief ministers have held their support with the draft act, 2013 act, draft act, that should be taken. These chief ministers of Maharashtra have written a letter to the rural government minister, Gera Ramesh, opposing the UP act. And they also know the compensation from 4 times to 2.2 of the market value. I don't know whether it is free or unfair, but I will give a copy of that to the round table so that when they make their recommendations, they will take cognizance of this. So I put this a copy to the chairperson so that what the Maharashtra Chief has written. <laughs> I, when we proposed four times compensation, the Maharashtra government, the then Congress government has reduced it to 2.2. Now it should be decided by the people that who are anti democratic and who are anti farmer and who are anti poor. Green lectures I have been doing it for the last 35 years since I'm of these days, and I am also a product of this. And I must share that this point of respect to this man. That this is Sravan was my general secretary when I was a student of Hispanic University. We were three seats at the time. Kandishwara, Sravan, and Jawahar. We lost one. So he was my leader. I voted for him. 
The Congress government of Kerala, Kerala is not BJP government or India government. The Congress government of Kerala publicly indicated that the government is involved with the self assessment, self impact assessment, and consent clause in 2019 Act. One more thing, I tell you. Even the present, right now, as on today, the deputy leader of Congress party, Raj Sabha, Mr. Anand Sharma, was finding very difficult to make his presentation during the debate, according to the Acquisition Act. Because he wrote a letter to the Prime Minister, I quote, the Congress Deputy Leader of Raj Sabha, Mr. Anand Sharma, in his letter to the Prime Minister, Sri Manmo Aung Singh, said, the bill, in its present shape, we have adverse land economic implications for manufacturing, industrialization, operation in India. Anand Sharma is not, never a BJP member. He was not even a sympathizer of BJP. He was a hardcore leader of the Congress party and a deputy leader and a trusted person of the party, Supreme Mosul Nehra. Further stated that the instance of consent of any person, I hope Mr. Sharma will take cognizance of this. He has been very vociferously arguing for the consent clause. In the instance of consent of 80% of affected families will seriously delay the acquisition and in many cases halt essential infrastructure projects. And now I come to the technical point of view. Even in 2013, 80% consent was necessary for private acquisitions, for private acquisitions. 70% for GPA and there was no concern required for any government project. And the same is being conveyed, as it is being carried for us. Now, for the obvious reason, again, quote unquote obvious reasons, it is being blamed, we are being blamed that we are doing here with concept clause. Who said? 80% concept is required even today as an how. At level 130, the consent clause is required for private parties, 80 percent consent. Then come to the second part of it, part B, 70 percent consent clause. 70 percent consent clause, most of the governments, state governments, including Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Haryana, I am citing only the Congress government. I have a full list of it, I synopsis of all the minutes that are there. Private Public participation consent clause may be taken out, may be done away because the government itself is a landowner. The country is only putting its money to develop a structure, whether it is a public primary health center or a public school or a garden or a structure of a protected water skill or laying a road from village to national area. So, so since government is the landowner or its agency. Suppose I am acquiring a land for a power project. Either government's Ministry of Energy will be the main owner of it, or else the implementing agency, NDPC or some other, some other degree, one of the plans. So now the land will be straight away taken over by the, will be acquired by the government, and government itself is. So this clause, even while it will be very hard to be, I, I, I will appreciate if this August audience make some good suggestions on this. Definitely, once again, I reiterate that definitely we will incorporate all the work suggestions that come up from this table as we have been doing it in the past. We have done it in the past, both. We are doing it and we have done it in the past. That whenever there is a no move part, we are ready to accept it. And we are will effectively more effectively. We will implement it more effectively than anyone. That much capital will be Then in such case, such anomalies should not be removed. If we try to do this, if the present dispensation try to do this, to remove these anomalies, or correct it, or try to make it more implementable, more people friendly, more farmer friendly, then what is wrong with it? Why this falls of much human time? We are committed. Basically, we have taken up this amendments with the three objectives. There are two clear ideas in our mind, in our actions, in our deeds, in our words, in our thoughts. That one, 
formal way to come what we under any circumstances, we will not let a formal rule give an opinion. Two, at the same time, experience, experience within the strategic and development needs of the country. We cannot be called any more as a developing country. It's a firm commitment of Barbara of this audience, everyone here, and also the same Narayana Mori. We never allow us to be put in coming years. We never allow us to be called as a persons of the developing country. We want to be a developed country. We will be a developed country. We shall be a developed country. And for that, the infrastructure, the foreign industry, whatever, whatever, at the same time, the, the ultimate clause is, ultimate condition is, the rock bottom rule is, rule is that the social welfare, common good, every individual's benefit and their social benefit and their well-being. So with this concept, the concept of abandoning the land acquisition is this. Five projects are with, five five are with, and I tell you, the, the, I, the reasons what we identified when we draft, we try to amend this thing, and when we supported the 2013 bill, our right to grow, everybody has a right, it's not someone's mercy. It's not the of the ruling party or the government of this minister or some leader to uh, give us an opportunity to grow. We have a right to grow. I have a right to fair compensation. You cannot mislead me as you have been doing it earlier. I have a right to come fair compensation and I am eligible for four times of the market value. Right of the farmers and noise made parties in both ways. This has this also come into the, the discussions during the earlier presentation. That we want the direct participation, we want the farmer and the landowner to be a part of the development process. This is the spirit behind making small amendments that are very essential and will improve the efficiency of the bill. All stakeholders, here it's not a farmer giving a land or taking a land or developer a land. No, every person is a stakeholder. This is a concept. And you have to trust me because I am always uncommitted and I have been moved my integrity in the last one year. And you do not have any other option except to trust me because my character says so. In the last one year, whatever I have done, I have done it for that. I mean, in the sense, the present government, I impersonate myself as the present government, that whatever we have done, it is for the nature of the society. Nothing has been done for personal gains. All stakeholders, current viewers of the land, its future users and the public interest are balanced and secure. That the, that the way I started my presentation, that's a right to balance and testing. The ordinance was only a reflection of the collective wearing of the state and energy legislation, so so. Then, which land to be acquired? It was mentioned in the bill. When it comes to act tomorrow, it will also be mentioned there. Right? The government land will be acquired first. The government land is put to use first. We will not, because it is mentioned in the act, we will not touch even an inch of private land when government land is available. We are not supposed to. It is part by the constitution because it will become a law. Then, if the government is land not available for a particular project in a particular place, then it comes to the barren land, Punjabi. In a dire consequences and a very essential situation, a private land, a residential land can also be acquired, but that too there is a limit in that graph in the bill. One can go through, because I am sitting here and you are all here, you can check that a particular nominal minimum percentage of the residential land only should be used to acquire, should be acquired. So it is a clause mentioned in the act. Then several competition. What happened earlier, all the citations that were given earlier, that I did not get compensation, I did not get even, I mean, we are also poor, everyone is a victim of this. <coughs> even 30, 30, 40, 40 years the relief and rehabilitation. So it has been made a rule that all the relief and rehabilitation measures has to be implemented first, then the land should be taken physical position. Then in the previous 2013 Act, that's one more thing, there was an option of giving employment to one member of the family. Tell me. Now we made it a compulsory. It's mandatory that who you are receiving a land. And it is the duty of the land acquisition officer at the district headquarters to 
make it public to put it on the notice board in collective office and RTO office and respective other offices where which person or which family was given a job, where and what job. All three has to be mentioned, put it on the notice board. After such formalities are completed, then only the land can be taken into position. Now, another criticism that again is this. But you are being here with the time limit. What is the time limit? The land will be returned to the landowner after five years if the project is not completed. Correct. The same rule is also here, not right now. Then, four and a half years the land will be in litigation. The landowner or somebody, some interested party or some middle person, whatever, who, who has goes to court, or goes from court to court, court to court. But after five years the project shelves down. Or the project cost escalates from 100 crores to 1000 crores. What will happen? Then we made a small amendment. Yes, we made an amendment, right? The land will be retained after five years from the date of execution. If it is not completed, from the date of execution. You said from the land, date of acquisition, and then from the date of execution. And the difference between execution or implementation should be very minimal or well, as, as less as time possible. Different, I mean, uh, uh, depending on the number of situations. Moreover, two, simultaneously, Another rule for you implementing this is that if suppose a particular project is not completed within a stipulated period, then the officer will be made responsible and the criminal cases will be booked against him that the UUT that he was having of non being punished is removed. So if, if I am making somebody responsible for the effective implementation and the timely completion of a project, I mean, really crime, or should it be a cost? So, such situations, similarly, there are several numerous advantages if somebody is losing a house. I will borrow also for one year, I will give them a, um, 3 dollar rupees per month, guaranteed employment, if no job for more than 20 years of new house, if house is lost, at least 25,000 rupees for a cattle shed, small shop, subsistence to the amount of rupees 3,000 per month, per one year, all such things. For who should not impose jurisdiction. But one more thing, the case of driving in this country, that is a very learned person, socially reputed also, they start, abashingly, unshamedly, they start spreading rumors. This is not that. Why we are taking every opportunity to is that in a democratic country like in India, can anyone be stopped from going to approach the court when he has a grievance? And a person like Vera Parker says that no, the right of going to court, approaching the court has been taken away. Is it possible? Will it be possible? For what reasons? Keeping what in mind? Up to playing as a studious, I dare I, I to say this, playing as a student of which part and which person, which organization you are spreading all kinds of rumors and nonsense. Can anybody stop anybody from going to court when the rights of that person have been affected? No. And another, another, another uh, very uh, upset to hear, you know, as a person, I mean, I, the land will be acquired for industrial corridor from Hindu Mahasamutan to Kashi, I mean, sorry, Himalayas, from Mandala Kasham to Arabia. So that's kind of nonsensical talks. I know I did exaggerate it by 10 to 20 percent, but 80 percent of it is true. Huh? 200 kilometers from the national highway, 200 kilometers from the country, they go on. on both sides. Then we said, yes, we made, we amended the law to give a clear picture that look, I will only acquire one kilometer. I will, I will acquire only one kilometer from this side and that side for any industrial border. That too, that too, if it is by the government. Two. The government will not require, take it from us, take it by that. The government will not acquire even an inch of land for private purpose. Not even private schools, not even for private hospital. We have nothing to do with We We acquire land, we take land only for the government projects. These are some of the highlights that I try to present 
in a given time of trend of the series. Now, if the, the very purpose of my coming here is to, because all these things you are all aware, but somehow I try to recap them and put it in a structured format. What I expect and what I really honored and I will be really grateful to all of you, each one of you, if you can make your valuable suggestion to Mr. Vigyan Parliamentary Committee on land acquisition, because definitely, as it was said by the Ramayana, that land acquisition is an essential component for the development. There is no dispute in this. How best we do it? How harmonizing we do it? How we can benefit the society for social harmony? for the well-being of each individual, whether it is of all the three persons that were mentioned by the Mr. Sunil, that all the three, land giver, land taker, developer. So each person of these three categories should be have a decent and well settled uh, rehabilitation, resettlement. So I look forward, I thank the organizers once again for giving me an opportunity to present some of the facts to you and I look forward for your valuable suggestions to the Giant Parliament Academy. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a very spirited, uh, I should say, the defense of the proposed uh, amendments and the ordinance.